beans planting Aloha, welcome to another episode of Hawaii Food and Farmers series where we talk to Hawaii's movers and shakers in Hawaii's local food systems. I'm your co-host Matt Johnson here uh, as always with Justin Espirito <laughs> and um, as always we are here on Thursday afternoons starting at four o'clock and you can also check out the show later on YouTube at, at ThinkTechHI. You can also call in and join us on the show at the number shown below, or it's just 415-871-2474. So Justine, who do we have on the show today? Today, as with every day that we have a new episode, it's a really exciting one. Yes. And <laughs> we, I love the exciting ones. Yeah. <laughs> so today we have some good friends of mine that also came highly they're recommended. Good friends of mine, too. <laughs> came highly recommended from our previous guest, uh, Joey Char. We have Robert and Latasha Wilson, uh, who were two graduates from the Go Farm Hawaii program, early in the program, second cohort. They have since graduated and have been farming on multiple parcels throughout the island. So they have some great experience to share with us mm. on the process <clears throat> of the training program, how they've kind of developed their farm and the different places they farmed in that kind of land acquisition mm. and kind of their perspective on a number of things that we've talked about. So cool. I'm so excited to have them on. And we have, so here is Robert and Latasha Wilson. Hi. And you might hear little Jimmy Wilson in the background little because Jimmy. he is in the studio as well. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank Hi. you for having thank us. Thank you for having us. Yeah, so let's kind of start with, um, let's briefly start with, if you want to describe a little bit about your farm, what you guys are growing, where you are, and where we can find your products. And then we'll kind of backtrack into your history and, and how you've gotten to where you are today. All right. Uh, we're Little Tomato Farms. We farm in Punalu on the Punalu Aupua'a Farms, uh, Bishop Estates land. And uh, we farm mainly mixed vegetables now, but we're trying to go more into tree crops and longer term stuff, seeing how we got a longer term lease now. But uh, we sell mainly out of the Farm Lovers Kailua Farmers Market on mm -hmm. Sunday mornings. Okay. And. Uh, um, we're working on expanding to having our own um, private CSA. Okay. We're um, going to, st we're starting work on a CSA with uh, Punalu Ahupa'a Farms, mm -hmm. and we're also involved with Friends with Farm CSA. Mm -hmm. Cool. Wait, so let's, let's go back. So um, how long have you guys been farming? So you went through the Go Farm program, and you graduated two, three years ago? I mean, not that long ago. Yeah, it wasn't that long ago. It was the second cohort, so that was 2013. 2013. Oh, okay. So we started uh, Ag School 1, and then I believe we graduated a year and a half later. Okay. And then we farmed in uh, Waimanalo for a while. Mm. Through the incubator portion. Yeah, through the incubator portion. We program. may have been neighbors. Maybe yeah. that's why I know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were neighbors. We battled the weeds together, and kind of got our feet underneath us and when the land opened up in Punalu we just jumped on it and luckily we got it. We've got uh, a little under two acres there and most of it is jungle right now. Well but that wasn't such an easy process when you talked about it earlier. You guys talked about when you started Incubator we all started farming there together but before you got to Punalu you guys checked out a lot of a lot of different places and Punalu is actually one that we that has been pretty challenging. We've had a couple of graduates kind of go there or check it out, and Joey was very... Including yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was very clear how I went there and was like, I can't handle this, but he mentioned, like, you guys have really thrived there. We've had a, a, a number of other folks that have been there. So if you want to talk about, um, you mentioned it's kind of like a steep learning curve. So if you want to kind of compare that, the experience in Waimanalo to, to what you've kind of faced there and what's allowed you to kind of persevere. Um, in Waimanalo, we had a lot more farmer friends near us, a little bit more infrastructure. Mm. We could tool share. That was a great benefit. Mm. But because we were all so neighborly, um, all the bugs knew where everybody was. <laughs> so it was challenging in that respect. In Punalu, our neighbors are further out, and we don't have any tool sharing. So it's all what we can bring. And at first, we were men and farmer powered. We um, we literally worked with sickles and hand tools, oh, and wow. we 
worked our way up with um, tillers and mowers and everything. Yeah, it was actually a steep learning curve. Uh, when you would till the ground or prepare the ground in Waimanalo, it would just stay there. Like you could just plan it out and I want this row to be that row. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Punalu, you better get on it because the buffalo grass up there, we've oh, actually tied wow. rubber bands onto it and it'll make this big loop in between. Oh, and geez. the loop will, like in a couple of days, 24 inches type of wow. stuff. But it just runs in all different directions. So uh, our brush cutter is our best friend right now. <laughs> Cause we, I mean, we've got a guy up there with a 40 horsepower, uh, Messi Ferguson with a brush hog. And that thing gets bogged down in the middle of that grass. Oh, wow. It's, yeah, I don't think I've ever, I had a, somebody recommend chainsaws. Yeah. They go through yeah, with yeah, chainsaws. Yeah, yeah. So I did a little bit of research and found a really nice clearing saw. The, it was the FS250, the still. Oh. I highly recommend it. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but that sounds impressive. <laughs> sounds cool. <laughs> Have you ever tried, like, using, like, like flames like going like i know like um he's like propane you were all about the flamethrower yeah <laughs> so oh, yeah it turns out the grass leaves burn really well but uh, the grass stem doesn't burn and okay. the clump just never burns you can stand over there and burn it all day so you're just like getting the tips but not the actual root of it so it doesn't help you out all that much yeah it kind of just clears the land for it to grow up faster mm. but we've been really getting the hang of it lately okay yeah we we have our we make our really big compost piles once we clear all the grass. Mm. And um, it was also the varieties. Like we had picked out a bunch of varieties of tomatoes and cucumbers that did really well in Waimanalo. Okay. And none of them really did so great in Punalu. Now, but why do you why do you think that is? Is it because of the different soil type, different weather patterns, too much buffalo grass, all the above. Well, the weeds didn't help, but. Uh, yeah, my theory is water. We got a lot of water over the summertime. And, in uh, Punalu, not as much not in not as much. Yeah, in Punalu, it was just more like the ground never dried out. So we're looking for more hmm. uh, wet-tolerant tomatoes. Like, we're going to try a uh, variety called Tropic out of the University of Southern Florida. Okay. Yeah, uh, we're going to try that in a big trial coming up in the spring. And then, are you guys able to still... So you went through the GoFund program, so you had this network that's connected with the University of Hawaii and Extension Service. Have you been able to leverage their, the expertise that's there to kind of help you? I mean, how did you come about making this decision to try this variety out of South Florida? Well, in, in GoFarm, we kind of, it really touched on a lot of the, not necessarily basics, but really let you wrap your head around Farming is so all-encompassing okay. to where you pretty much have to be all the way from a salesman to like a botanist and everything, yeah. everything in between. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as we're getting better at different aspects of farming, we find more time to research things. Okay. So it's like I'm all into citrus right now. Right. So we've been going off on citrus for the last year. Cool. But before that, it was tomatoes. Yeah. So we search for disease resistance and then... Uh, how many days it takes to fruit and all that is a factor here. And what kind of resources are you using to kind of get that information? Are you, are you working with the extension agents or that's kind of your own personal research you've been doing or getting recommendations? Kind of on pretty much online and feeling your way through it. The uh, University of Davis and CTAR mm -hmm. actually has a lot of really good papers. And a lot of papers written like in the 70s and the 80s that are just available online if you just Google it. Yeah, yeah uh, there was one earlier that was from two, 2013 that was basically just telling you to grow lemons. Okay. It's like tell, telling you that we only produce 100,000 pounds of lemons and we import 4 million pounds of lemons into the state. So, so this was a, a, like an a article written specifically about the lemon industry in, in Hawaii. Hawaii. Oh, okay. Uh, and Google just brought it right up. It was CTAR. So is that what you guys are going to start? For, is that part of the perennials that you were talking about? You're going to start. Yeah, we're ones? going to plant a whole bunch of different citrus. Uh, blood orange seems to do really well at our elevation, okay. but I've been told that limes and lemons will do really well with the wet. So we're looking for uh, looking for Kona lime right now because it's a good, mm -hmm. really good rootstock. Okay. Are you going to so be can... little lime farms then? Is that going to be a transition <laughs> <laughs> to that? No, the name is actually more personal to Tasha. Okay. 
Well, I'm curious to kind of go back a little bit to that of once you kind of built up some of the skills in Go Farm, acquired the land, and then you guys kind of went into additional training or consideration through the ag business program mm. with Matt. So if you kind of want to talk about that, hear a little more about the, the kind of brand you want to develop or how you kind of identify your niche and kind of personal story behind the farm. Um, well, when I got into farming, I decided I wanted to um, be very transparent. And I, I hope um, our slogan is sunshine, water, and aloha. And that's pretty much all that goes into our stuff and some organic fertilizer. <laughs> a lot of organic fertilizer. Doesn't quite fit content, into the slogan but, there. <laughs> and um, we don't use um, synthetic chemicals or synthetic fertilizers. We use only OMRI rated stuff. Mm. And I don't put OMRI anything. is like the uh, organic certified it's product. It's kind of like an overall guideline. Yeah. Some, some things are better than others, mm -hmm. but at least it, it's a standard. Yeah. And I don't use anything that I don't feel safe with my three-year-old son touching because okay. he does get into everything. Yeah, yeah, I bet. And um, I find that it gives us um, much more fresher produce and longer lasting. And that, um, that the pests aren't really as big of a deal as some of them, some other farmers think that you don't have to spray all the time. Okay. Um, I came up with our brand because I wanted to be kind of rustic, mm. a little modern, but professional. Okay. And, um... I think that's your motto, right? <laughs> Is that what you told her? <laughs> <laughs> and I, um, I had a hard time coming up with the name until I kind of reflect a reflected a little bit and decided to go with Little Tomato Farms because um, he calls me Little Tomato. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. I have a favorite song um, by a band called Pink Martini, Hang On Little Tomato. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's about being really hopeful and getting through life and when it rains, you know. The sun will come out again. <laughs> yeah, and there will be tomatoes. Yeah. <laughs> so. And so... Did we? Maybe, I thought I heard something. <laughs> We're going to go uh, into a quick break, and then kind of on that note of your guys' story with your farm, I want to talk about your current distribution methods and the idea of working with the co-op and being at the farmer's market and how that kind of relationship and the brand kind of helps interact with your customers and what that can kind of move into. So we're going to take a quick 60-second uh, break and come right back. I'm Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science here on Think Tech Hawaii. Every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m., you'll have a chance to come and listen and learn from scientists around the world. Scientists who talk about their work in meaningful, easy to understand ways. And you'll come to appreciate science as a wonderful way of thinking, way of knowing about the world. You'll learn interesting facts, interesting ideas. You'll be stimulated to think more. Please come join us every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m. here on Think Tech Hawaii for Likeable Science with me, your host, Ethan Allen. I've got the Beagle Sisters here with a healthy tip. We encourage you to enjoy the food you eat this holiday season and keep it local and healthy. Yeah. Eat the rainbow. Eat yeah. the rainbow. And if you need any produce, come to the Red Barn on the North Shore. And welcome back to Hawaii Food and Farmers Series, where we're talking to Hawaii's farmers and shakers in Hawaii's local food system. Uh, <laughs> as always, we're here every Thursday afternoon at 4 o'clock. Uh, so Justine, who are we talking to again? Today we are with Robert and Latasha Wilson of Little Tomato Farms slash Little Lemon Farm in the future. <laughs> no, just kidding. So um, we were just talking about the, the process you guys went from Go Farm into Punalu'u. And I want to talk a little bit about more about the co-op. Um, we've had Sean and Laamea on before, and you guys have been founding members not only as farmers, but as, as the board. And I wanted uh, to talk. You've had a very thorough um, idea of what you want your, your brand to be and your kind of representation. And I just want to hear a little bit more about how that you're your presence with the co-op together of all the multiple farms and your presence at the farmer market of, of how that's really helped you guys develop as a small farm together and having those interactions with customers and just kind of about that experience. 
Yeah, we're uh, founding members and current treasurers of the Friends of Farms Co-op, and uh, I believe you're a member of the co-op still. I think I still am. Yeah, <laughs> but, <laughs> supporting uh, member, honorary member, <laughs> <Yeah>. ex officio. <laughs> but it, it, it's been great having everybody together because we also get to run it more as a uh, as a real entity. Like everybody's farms, we all have our pitfalls, but the co-op has records of what people sold and yeah. and you know what sells and it's like compiling all those things year upon year we can tell like you know have some data to look back on and yeah have some yeah. data to look back on and it's it also allows us to really make a really vibrant farmers market booth and a really nice mm -hmm. presentation mm -hmm. we don't all have to be the the jack of all trades we can kind of specialize in what we want to do and each farm has its its strengths and weaknesses mm. it's like some some of the farms have uh, fully mature orchards on it and some of the farms have like eggs and stuff that we don't do mm -hmm. and right. then it kind of breaks down into some of the other farmers are really into vegetables which is what we're into at the moment so we kind of all have our our niche that we fall into and it really brings a nice presentation for everybody to sell all of their stuff like we even have max the beekeeper Oh, so we've got okay. honey at our farm and everything. Awesome. So it was really cool. Wait, at your personal farm, you guys have Sorry, one. not at our farm. Oh, okay. At Just our farmer's with, market. Within the, the co-op. Within okay. the co-op. Oh, I met him before. We need to get him on the show. Did he win the soup? Uh, no. I think maybe he did. That okay. sounds familiar. Yeah. Um, on that note, in terms of, you know, everyone kind of having their specialty, and I know it was developing, are you guys cooperatively sharing production plans and deciding through this re uh, through this uh, market, are you only going to be doing, like, are you guys going to be the kale folks or the tomato folks or the lemon folks? Uh, I really think that having so many farms, we're up to 15 now mm -hmm. in our co-op, so having so many farms, uh, it's much more of the coordination so that people don't have duplicates at the farmers right. market now mm -hmm. but we're all just feeling each other out and once it uh once we get a feel for the farmers we kind of know what their farm is capable of and what where they want to go mm -hmm. so the co-op is really not just to sell stuff it's more to uh bring farms along so that we can have our own support net because yeah, there's definitely. a there's a really small support system in hawaii and it's like it, it's kind of hard for farmers, even even not new farmers. We've got some farmers that have been farming for 20, 30 years, mm -hmm. and you always hear from old farmers that farming's not profitable. That you know you you gotta have another job. It's kind of like digging in the dirt with your hands. And I just didn't. I don't want to be that farm. So our co-op is all about you know having. We're all trying to get out of the rat race together. Mm. Like so, uh, Mondragon, you know, Mondragon Corporation out of Spain. Oh, I've heard of this. It's yeah. kind of like a, it's a co-op as well, it's right? It's a cooperative. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> We're emulating them in a, on a small scale. Okay. So speaking of the rat race, what were you guys doing before? So at some point, you guys are, you know, young and you're uh, married and you have a couple of kids. You guys have busy lives going on here. And at some point, you made a decision what, three, four, five years ago, you're like, we want to start farming. You're talking about the rat race. What were you guys doing before, and, and what led to this decision of, of, you know, getting out of this? I am currently still on the wheel. So. Okay, okay. <laughs> we all are. We all are. <laughs> I'm a craftsman at Martin & MacArthur, so that actually pays the bills at the moment, but farming is quickly overtaking it. Okay. Uh, eventually, down the line, a few years, we look to be full-time farmers, but... I mean, we pretty much are full-time farmers now. Right, right, right. So we got a full-time full job. Farmers with another job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tasha, how about oh. your, yourself? What were you doing before, or are still um, doing? Well, before I was between careers, I thought I was going to be a vet tech. Okay. And then I was just figuring it out, and I decided I found Go Farm, mm. and I thought this looks like a really great opportunity, and I found out that I can be a farmer. I was planning on doing that when I was old, and I figured, why not now? Why yeah, not live yeah. the dream now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, oh, I like that answer. <laughs> <laughs> and then what did you, do you feel like you really knew what you were getting into? Or um, now, 
did you got into the program and you got on the land has it been like a shock of you like was there a sense of being kind of naive about it and now you're you're in it or has it kind of lived up to what you were expecting because since it is so challenging I'm I'm, I'm always amazed that people are like yeah let's make this transition let's start from scratch let's let's do it so if you can talk a little bit about how you decided what gave you the confidence to like jump into it was it the fact that this program seemed like a long-term um, supportive network or you just really thought that well Tasha found the program online uh, in 2013 and originally we had looked it up from my nephew my nephew is 27 he's not a little kid but uh, we had looked it up and he kind of brushed it off saying it would be a waste of time and seeing how it was free we decided to take it not really yeah. having much expectations I mean we were both inclined to work in the dirt and uh, it was Dan was the one who really opened our eyes to what farming can be and what it should be he was like farmer straight out of central casting this is Dan the Dan, first farm Dan coach. Rudoy yeah the first farm coach and he was just like you know, almost like uh, a vision of what you could be if you just put a little bit of time and effort into it. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think his message was always like, you can do this, just don't give up. And you think there are, I think, a lot of resources and, and support for it. Yeah, there's a lot of goodwill towards farming. That's one of the few perks. So um, talking about like the vision and future, so you guys are talking about trying to get off the wheel and being able to make this kind of like your, uh, you know, put as much 100% of, of your efforts into it. Where do you guys see, where do you want this to go? Are you going to become this massive mega farm that takes over the entire windward side of Oahu? Um, or what's, you know, what do you guys see, where do you want to see that happen? What do you have once we have Punalu at its full potential of probably a bunch of mixed fruit trees, we're going to seek a bigger parcel and we're looking for our somewhere that's green, our um, some place where we can live and pay rent and I can walk outside in the morning and go straight to work mm. and not have to worry about, oh, I have a 45 minute drive back and forth right. from my farm to okay. my house. Because you guys are currently living in town. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. And so every time we go to the farm, it's a quarter tank of gas, but we love it. And yeah. I get actually stir crazy when I don't go to the farm. Yeah. Um, we envision having this larger farm, maybe um, 10, um, 20 to 40 acres. And we're gonna diversify into mostly tree crops. And um, we're always gonna do a bit of fresh vegetables. We really like having fresh carrots and lettuce and radishes. And you see that you want to, do you see yourself on a wa staying on Oahu? Yes, definitely. We actually looked at land on Maui, but we felt like our family and our network is here on Oahu. So we want to stay where the population's bigger at the moment. And the market is here on Oahu. And um, one day I, I think that farmland is going to open up. I'm really excited seeing so many new farmers coming through Go Farm. Mm. It's really exciting because at first, like in our class, we had a kind of high attrition rate mm. of people deciding if they wanted to be farmers or not. Right. So seeing so many graduates now, I'm like more people are willing to get in it and work hard. Yeah, it seems like they've had smaller <clears throat> number of classes, but more, um, I don't want to say more committed, but um, more committed. <laughs> um, and now it's like a, a much more, you have to pay to, to be in it as well, and it seems like the selection process is, is a little bit uh, more rigorous. Yeah, it's one of those things where, uh, I mean, we used to have a real vibrant farming society on Oahu, but, and the land is still there. It's just tucked away, and they're trying to hide it so they can put houses on it. Hmm. So uh, they want to try and make like there's not any land there when none of us are really looking for large-scale farms. We're all right. looking for smaller family farms. And it seems like if you were a giant company and you were looking for a lot of land, mm. they got all the land in the world for you. Right. But for a small family farm, oh, sorry, we already did that. Uh, may, maybe in your dreams type of stuff. Move, mm. to, move to the big island, there's plenty of land for you out there. Right, right. When there's plenty of land here. Mm -hmm. Have there been any talks, I mean, especially, you know, the power of you guys as a, as a co-op, 
and you started off with the farmer's market and now you're looking to other things to work co cooperatively on. Has there ever been any discussions or thoughts about maybe looking at a piece of land that you could go in as a co-op to either purchase or, or lease? As you're saying, like, you know, land is available for the big farms, but if you guys go in as a co-op, then you're a larger uh, we, farming We have force. talked about that. We've talked about that with some people with land. The problem is they're kind of looking for, actually, I don't know what they're looking for because they didn't pick us. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> but Something it, other than what you yes, guys have. It, Wait, that was you guys, sorry, you approached someone to kind of pursue that? Yeah, there was, I want to say there was 40 acres in the back of Waimanalo we were talking about real seriously last acres. year. Okay. But it ended up being subdivided into some other farms. Mm. But uh, there is potential for that out there. Uh, we have uh, meetings all the time uh, where we bring the whole co-op together and really talk about where we want to go in our future and stuff. And yeah, that comes up quite often mm. that we should all just try and go in on some land. Yeah. We're looking to start a uh, uh, equipment share kind of after our CSA. But uh, we're just feeling it out. That, that was the whole thing. There wasn't really a lot of it's infrastructure. Like a tractor or a tiller and stuff like yeah. that? Yeah, and a shredder. It's like uh, we've already got some trucks and some other stuff. We're just trying to get that more into a coherent uh, sharing possibility so that it's not just you're using my truck and if it breaks down you better buy me a new one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly we we want to get it to where you know our co-op members aren't so liable for the equipment and the equipment actually gets fixed if it gets broken yeah awesome well that actually it, we're out of time um it was great to have you guys come on and give a little bit of your backstory and i love updates on the, the co-op and what kind of like new innovative partnerships are kind of developing. So it's great to kind of have you guys staggered and, and give us little updates. So thanks so much for coming on and I look forward to hearing more about what you guys are doing. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Awesome.